welcome to Spar's Better and Better podcast. It's good, I, it's good to be here. Awesome. I am Jennifer Kavasic. I'm Spar's Communications Director, sitting down with Gabe Walsh, who has been CEO since July 1st of 2024, just two months. It's crazy. It really is. Yeah, well, it's great to have you here. Yeah, it's good it's to be here. A, Thanks, Jennifer. Good couple months so far. Yeah, absolutely. And more to come. Um, well, why don't we start with you telling us a little bit about yourself and your background and how it yeah. led you to Spar? Yeah, no, absolutely. So first of all, yeah, just a, such a pleasure to be here. It's been an awesome couple months. Man, it's gone by really, really fast. Uh, so yeah, prior to this role, I, I was in Duluth, Minnesota. Um, I spent about two years as a CEO of the Lake Superior Area Realtors. Um, we operated a multiple listing service, um, ran an association with, you know, a lot of the member services, you know, that we have here at SPAR, very, you know, similar in that regard, uh, on a smaller scale. Um, and yeah, had a, had a really great opportunity to collaborate with a lot of members there, you know, work with them, work through challenges that we were facing as an industry. Um, and, uh, yeah, great opportunity. Uh, prior to that, I was also general counsel for the Iowa Association of Realtors, um, Size-wise, much more similar to SPAR, uh, about 8,000 members. Uh, but at the Iowa Association, I was doing things like talking to brokers on the legal hotline, um, developing statewide real estate forums that our agents were using in transactions all across the state. Um, I built out a professional standards program. Uh, we, we took the professional standards where ethics complaints are heard from the local level and took that really up to the state level. Um, where we, you know, we're managing those all across the state and uh, had an opportunity to build that program out. So yeah, I've been in the industry for a little while here and just uh, really excited to be here at SPAR. Oh, that's great. That's even a little bit more than I knew yeah. previously. Yeah, yeah. So what was it about SPAR that attracted you to apply here? Yeah, you know, I was, I was happy. I was happy in my job at the Lake Superior Area Realtors. And, um, you know, sometimes it's just a timing thing. And I, I, I knew John Fredlington. I, I got to know him just a little bit. Um, uh, while I was up at the Lake Superior Area Realtors, and just what a fantastic guy. Um, just had so many great things to say about Spar uh, all the time, and it was obviously really sad to hear about his passing. Um, but when the job did become available, it was something that I certainly had to take a look at, just kind of knowing that there was a good culture of positivity here, um, knowing that there was a, a, an association that had a very member-driven mission. Um, it was something that was attractive to me and, and something that I certainly just had to um, have a conversation about. Nice. Yeah. No, it was obviously yeah. really sad to lose John yeah. and as bittersweet maybe as yeah. it is, it's been yeah. welcome to have yeah. you here joining us. Appreciate that. Um, I'm curious, what was your initial impression of SPAR before being named CEO? And I know you alluded to yeah. it a little bit in that previous yeah. answer, but how has it held up in these couple months that you've been here? Yeah. One of the things from the second I really got to a point where it's like, I'm going to consider this job. Um, going down all the research, ta having the conversations with people, learning more about the organization, it became so evidently clear to me even before an interview process started that this was a very member-driven organization, um, which is very, very important because that's the type of organizations that I've been involved in, that I've been in senior leadership positions in, that I've had the opportunity to run. Um, and I strongly believe in organizations that really keep the member first in everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was something that from the outside looking in, um, really seemed to be the case with SPAR. And um, it's definitely lived up to that in every way imaginable since I've been here and even more. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And I think from a staff perspective, we see that too. Members yeah. are involved in every aspect yeah. of the decisions yeah, we make. Yeah, the culture, I mean, just from from the staff to the members to to the leadership to everybody, it's just such a culture of positivity. It's it's it sounds cliche when you talk about the word family, but I mean, it really is an environment where people are truly supportive of one another. Um, the relationships are more than just, you know, um, selling real estate and the relationships really are authentic. And yeah, that's a huge part of uh, making your day, you know, coming here all the better. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I'm curious and um, obviously we've seen some of it so far, but what are the skills and experiences that you brought with you that you feel like are an attribute to SPAR? Yeah, whether, whether it was sitting in my role um, as the general counsel for the Iowa Association of Realtors, where we were trying to build out a statewide professional standards program, right? Or whether it was serving as CEO at the Lake Superior Area Realtors as we were dealing with the announcements um, of the NAR settlement agreement and the upcoming practice changes and all those different things. In every role that I'm in, probably my biggest skill set is, I think, my ability to unify people, bring people together, um, not to... Um, micromanage people, but to bring people in a way where you rec recognize that there's people who have certain skill sets that need to be at the table that need to help push an issue forward or make a change. 
And, you know, in all my roles, I've been able to really rally those people together to, to move forward in a positive way. And I think that's the biggest skill set that I've bring to this organization. Uh, and I think that's a skill set that, you know, hopefully I've brought to this organization so far in the last 60, 70 days. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've seen it a little yeah. bit so far <laughs> and obviously well more. Yeah. And I think you're right. I mean, we yeah. talk a lot of times in terms of a member perspective, yeah. you know, you have your numbers people, you yeah. have your yeah. experience people, yeah. you know, kind of the touchy feely. Yeah. So a little bit of everything. Um, curious to know, how do you engage members and encourage involvement within members? You know, what would bring, why should members be involved? Why should they care to be involved in that local level? Yeah, I think, um, Man, that's a great question. Um, obviously, as somebody who works for the association, I'm going to be saying, get involved, get involved, get involved. But really, I think it's something that everybody can should consider because you, you you think of it like, man, it's going to be this huge time commitment and I'm trying to sell sell real estate and I'm trying to be at kids' sporting events and I'm trying to do all these things. How am I going to have time? But I, I would just encourage everybody to really try to make that a priority. And involvement doesn't have to mean being on the board of directors. It doesn't even have to mean serving on a committee. It could mean calling me, calling you, Jennifer, and saying, hey, I, I'm, I'm really good um, with you know social media or marketing, and I've got some really good ideas. I, I, I don't have a committee that I could serve on, but I can give you a half hour of my time to, to give you some ideas to maybe help the organization. If, if that's how you want to get involved to, to start out, that's a great first step, right? Because I think once you are involved and once you're here, you see that this is just a great community to learn more to grow more, to understand the industry more, and to be a part of something bigger than yourself that directly will have an impact. You may not see it on a day-to-day -day how this impacts your business, but if you're here um, for a while and you really sit down and see all the issues that we're dealing with, you'll see that this does truly make an incredible amount of difference um, in the lives of our members, the work we do here. Yeah. One of my favorite things is just experiencing and witnessing the connections, seeing yeah. members kind of introduce each Absolutely. other. Absolutely. It's, it's fun to watch. It's a blast. And you yeah. see it kind of yeah. blossom a lot of It's times. so authentic, yeah. Mm -hmm. So at Spar, and you know this, but a lot of what we talk about is value proposition, mm -hmm. and much of it is based on member feedback and hearing what the members, what they want, what their needs are. What are some of the benefits of membership from your perspective that yeah. tap into that? Well, there's obviously a lot of benefits that we have, right? I mean, from the more day-to-day -day side of things if I'm standing on the front porch of a property and I can't get into this house because my electronic key isn't working and my client's getting upset and I need to be here in 10 minutes, how can you help? Obviously, those are the kind of the value things that we are able to provide sort of on a day-to-day -day basis or trying to help you access a certain form to deal with a client in a transaction or um, help and try to calm a situation down if a client's upset at another agent and pointing them in the direction of how to file an ethics complaint or, or how to get somebody to come in and step and help with those things. You know, we have some of those more day-to-day -day value propositions, mm -hmm. but the value propositions that are so massive our association that sometimes you don't really understand them until after they happen is like our advocacy. You know, we have two government affairs directors, a senior vice president of advocacy that are focusing constantly on issues uh, that impact your bottom line, that impact your day-to-day -day business. Um, and that's not just happening here at SPAR. That's as a realtor member happening at the local level, the state level, and the National Association of Realtors. Think about COVID-19. Think about the pandemic in 2020. We literally, as an industry, I was in Iowa at the time, but we're wondering as an industry, are we going to get shut down? Are people going to continue to be able to transact real estate? Are people going to be able to tour properties? It was scary times. And now you look back and like, oh, that would have never happened. We were really worried at the time that that could happen. And my understanding in Minnesota, that was the same exact thing. But because of the relationships that we can build, you know, we were able to make sure that we remained an essential service throughout that time period. You look at the advocacy on the national level, the National Association of Realtors was involved in, you know, negotiating deals and advocating for increased, um, you know, unemployment benefits for realtors who, as independent contractors, normally weren't able to receive those benefits historically. But I would argue through the great efforts of the National Association of Realtors, um, those sort of things um, became available to realtors for the first time ever. So again, you don't see those day to day when you're paying your membership dues, but when you really think about over time, how much of an impact those dues have on your business and your livelihood and what your life might have looked like if you were shut down for a year at that time, um, that's a huge value proposition in and of itself. Yeah, I remember that in yeah. those early days. Yeah, 
Yeah, and so many others, but that's just to name one. I mean, yeah, huge one. Absolutely. Spire is unique. I mean, we have this huge geographical area covering 12 counties. And I'm just curious from your perspective, you know, what is some of the work that we do or in your role as CEO, how will we reach all the members within our geographical area? Well, I can say our, our wonderful team here that I have the honor to work with every day. I mean, we, you know, Jennifer, I know we've sat down in meetings together where we talk about planning events and getting messages out. And the first thing our staff's talking, how do we make sure we get our north, south, east, west, different areas of our membership? Let's not just have stuff in the metro area. Uh, let's make sure we get out to our more rural areas of, of our membership. So we're constantly trying to figure out ways to get our message out to those places. Um, that's especially important to me. I'm kind of a rural, a rural Iowa, rural roots kind of guy. I grew up in a town of uh, 1800 people. I graduated high school with 39. Um, and you know, when I was at the Iowa Association of Realtors, I had the opportunity to go on a statewide broker tour where we literally gave presentations, not to rooms full of a hundred people, but 10, uh, 15 really meaningful, you know, conversations with people in small rooms and really small towns across Iowa and talked about what their real estate marketplaces looked like, which was some of the you know most impactful work I've done since I've been in the business. So I think we're going to continue at SPAR to, to build on that and try to find ways to make sure that we're not just the St. Paul, not just the St. Paul Association yeah. of Realtors, but we truly are the St. Paul Area Association of Realtors. And we truly get that message out um, to everybody and make sure that everybody everywhere in those 12 counties is, is feeling buy-in and is feeling that value proposition in the same way. Well, and you're about to experience in November, I think we're going on year three of Thanksgiving back where we yeah. have been partnering with local food shelves and yeah. all, uh, all of our service areas, all 12 counties, and establish some partnerships with some of those yeah. who are now calling us with their needs. So kind of one small project, but Absolutely. It, you know, yeah. great a, ripple effect. It's a great example. Yeah. Yep. So I want to switch gears a little bit. SPAR also partners with a lot of people throughout the industry beyond just our local association here. What does, collabor what does collaboration look like to you, especially in this industry and beyond SPAR? It's a great question. You know, I'm a, again, going back a few questions ago when you're talking about what I bring to SPAR, I think one of the biggest things, again, and I'll double down, is my ability to bring stakeholders together to unify people, to get people moving in the, in the same direction towards a common goal. Um, there are a lot of huge challenges that our industry faces going forward, and we're not going to be able to provide great solutions to all these challenges if we're just thinking within our own walls. We're going to have to go out and work with and form alliances with strategic partners um, in other industries um, that you know are involved in the real estate transaction and they're involved in the issues of you know private property rights and home ownership, and to have conversations with those people, see what our synergies are, um, see where we can. Um, collaborate and work together to, you know, um, achieve common goals. I think going in with coalitions and with collaboration is important in anything we do. Um, and, and that's certainly, I think, going to be central to our success going forward. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Yeah. When you started yeah. in July, yeah. we did not really give you a chance to sit down and get a feel for yeah. the climate and how yeah. things go. It was kind of boots on the ground running right yeah. away. And you started in a busy time with yeah. the settlement underway and uh, internally started a big by bylaws change recently or an update. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about what each of these means for SPAR and their respective initial impacts for members? Yeah, there was no there was no trial introductory training period for the job. Let's just say that. And uh, uh, not to, you know, that's to be expected. But uh, yeah, no, it was definitely, I can't think of a busier time to ever walk into a position like this, um, as you've alluded to, and there's a lot going on. Yeah, we... Um, we did a pretty comprehensive bylaws change, um, and we just brought that to a membership vote. And understand how this worked in process. Our board of directors said, okay, well, it's been years since we've done just a general bylaw update. Let's do that. Uh, about um, a decade. Uh, yeah. And I mean, 300 and some changes um, that were mostly non-substantive that needed to be changed. Um, but then a few other key changes. One of those, the most prominent one probably, is the bylaw change that said you no longer are required to be a realtor to participate um, in the multiple listing service through SPAR. That was a big um, fundamental bylaw change um, that we had. And as an organization that we are, 
our board doesn't just make those bylaw changes themselves. Um, the members, the members by a vote actually approve and are the final stamp on any changes to the bylaws. So um, from pretty much the day I got here all the way up until the vote on August 15th, we were making sure that we had plans in place, right, to, um, you know, facilitate this change to uh, having non-realtors be part of the, you know, the, the, the MLS, there was a lot of conversations internally, obviously, that we had to have to facilitate if that vote were to pass and preparing for if that vote were to pass. And we had lots of conversations. We had lots of conversations with brokers, with agents, information sessions, lots of blog posts, frequently asked questions that we put together, right? We tried to make sure that the membership was very educated on what these proposed changes were so they could ultimately make the decision uh, on what they wanted to do. And um, yeah, with, with certainly, I think, 60 plus percent of the vote, um, all those bylaw changes, 65 plus percent of the vote, all those bylaw changes um, did pass. Yeah, no, that was yeah. a big undertaking, yeah. but it was great to have so many members involved yeah. and share their opinions yeah. and perspectives. Absolutely. So this seems like a good segue. I know coming up in uh, a couple of weeks, September 17th to be exact, we are going to be having a conversation talking about 2024 and beyond, and you're going to be partnering with a few local folks. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and uh, just kind of share the invitation via this podcast as well? Yeah, absolutely. September 17th. 9.30 a.m., double-check the calendar. Um, but, yeah, um, myself, um, Tim Dane from North Star MLS, Josh McFall from the Minnesota Realtors, the CEO there, um, John Kopecki, Vice President of Legal Affairs for the Minnesota Realtors, uh, and myself are going to get together. Um, our wonderful president, Amy Peterson, is going to moderate uh, a conversation that we're going to have um, about kind of what's been transpiring in the industry, what all these practice changes meant on August 15th, August 17th, um, what they might mean for the industry going forward, and just really having a dialogue and a conversation um, of, of everything that's transpired. So what we're doing for this is we're asking brokers mm -hmm. um, that manage offices to actually register on behalf of their entire office. Um, and we want you to have office meetings, bring your agents um, to your office spaces, and if you do that, you can broadcast our panel right from your office. We'll send you a gift card so you can get breakfast, refreshments, whatever that looks like. Um, but it should be a great opportunity to kind of learn more about what's happening. So definitely would welcome you to that. Yeah, I think that'll be a great discussion. And my yeah. understanding is we have at least 15 offices already on board. So yeah. it should be a pretty robust awesome. conversation. Awesome. Well, I don't want to end this podcast conversation without just asking, what are some of your hopes and dreams for SPAR? Yeah. Um, look, I think this is just a good chance to 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 kind of just talk about what where we kind of find ourselves right now as a as an industry um, and as an organization. There's no way to put it other than to say that we are in a period of transition um, and we are in a period of great change. And um, when you talk about change, it can be pretty scary. Um, it can certainly be scary. And people definitely, um, myself included at times, right, can get very used to um, the way we do things and get comfortable in sort of our day-to-days. Mm -hmm. And right now, we're finding here at SPAR every day that we're having to get kind of uncomfortable. And we know that you out in the industry right now throughout these changes have found yourselves getting a little uncomfortable because it's something different. Um, but look, the practice changes that took place, you know, to the extent that they help consumers better understand the transaction, better understand how our agents are getting paid, um, better understand how representation works, right? Those are things that we've always cared about as an organization. Those, those, those are good things. And those are some good outcomes, certainly, of this settlement. And this is just an opportunity for all of us to really say, what's next? How can we do better? How can we improve our business? How can we make what we do even more transparent? Um, how can we build to, to make this better than it's ever been. And I think we all have to really have that mindset, that mindset of there is change, but with change comes opportunity. That sounds cliche, but it's truly an opportunity for us to really take a hard look at how we do things and are there ways we can improve. We're certainly doing that here at SPAR. 
we're going to be looking at everything over the next year or two and saying, is, is this the best use of member dollars? Is what we're doing, what the members are really needing to help grow their business in the year 2024, 2025, 2026, right? Uh, we're going to continue as an organization to have those conversations and figure out how we can grow and make this thing uh, the best that it can possibly be. So look, I'm just really looking forward to meeting more members, to having more conversations, to to figuring out if there's a better way that we can continue to do things um, because, you know, we'll never have it totally figured out. There's always room for growth. Yep. Well, and I love that. I mean, it's easy to say change yeah. is easy, but you don't know what yeah. you don't know. But I love the idea of kind of what's next and, yeah. you know, look at those opportunities and Absolutely. how to explore those. Absolutely. So is there anything else you want to add that we haven't touched on in this series of questions? I don't think so. Just to Just to say once again that, you know, We've got such a great team here, um, surrounded by such a great group of uh, team members, staff members, leadership, uh, board members, and just everyday members that have come in and just um, genuinely just thanked me for being here and seem excited about where we're headed and and all those different things. So I, I just appreciate everybody's support. I appreciate the energy. Uh, I appreciate the enthusiasm. And I really think that this culture here um, has been built to be very good over a long period of time. And we're just going to continue to grow it. And I'm really excited for that. I think so too. And I've heard you say multiple times, so I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, you know, if you have any questions or anybody has questions, you're open, open Absolutely. door to people stopping in, Absolutely. giving you a phone call, shooting you an email. Yeah. So Anytime. Well, great. It's been great having yeah. you join us on staff. Welcome again. Yeah. And thank you for your time here. Thank you very much. Great to be here.